Open the prison doors, he pours. 
Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. My name is Allison. I am the Director of Worship Arts here at Springfield First, and we are just excited to worship together. Would you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, you are good, and your love endures forever, Father, and we know that and we feel that this morning. This morning, we give you all the praise and all the glory for the beauty and the wonder that you have created in this world. Father, we pray that you would fill our hearts with your love this morning. Open our eyes and open our ears and open our hearts to your message so that we might be better disciples, that we might be your hands and your feet. Father, because we know we are created by you and for you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. And I invite you now to have a seat as we are blessed to celebrate baptism today. And so I would invite Livy and her family, all who would like to stand up with her, to come here now. And uh, Livy Nelson is coming to be baptized. And uh, there she is. She's the daughter of Greg and Jordan Nelson, and we are so delighted that we get to have a baptism this morning. So before we do that, I just, on the behalf of the whole church, I have a few questions for you. Through this sacrament, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth by water and the spirit. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives to you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, I do. And will you nurture Livy in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life? If so, would you say, I will? I will. And do you, as the body of Christ, Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, please say, we do. And will you help to uh, be a supportive community for Livy as she lives her journey of faith? If so, please say, we will. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you and we remember that when nothing else existed but chaos, you swept over the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. When the, after the flood, you set in the cloud a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to a land that you had promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of water and Livy who receives it to wash away her sin, clothe her in righteousness, and that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal God, through the Son, Jesus Christ, with you in the Holy Spirit, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. And do you want to hold Livy? Or? Sure. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Hi, Livy. All righty. Livy, Olivia Nelson, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of the water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. 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 And on behalf of our church, uh, there's a gift for you. And would you join me now in expressing our appreciation and welcome of Livy who has received baptism. <laughs> well done, Livy. Well done. Awesome. So uh, here's my next assignment for you. Would you stand up again and share with one another the peace of Christ? So shake hands with those around you.
Well, good morning, friends. I'm Sharon Sweeney, Director of Connections, and it is my honor and privilege today to introduce to you our newest members. And this is one large class, you guys. Leading us off is the Bag family. Pharrell is a college student at Lincoln Land Community College. She enjoys reading and playing the piano. Karina is a high school student at Springfield, Illinois. I mean, at Springfield High, and she enjoys reading, playing sports, and driving. Mirza is their dad. He's married to Afia, who is already a member here, and they brought their family here on the invite of your sister, right? And he is a cook at Chili's. He enjoys badminton and hunting. This is Susan and Ben Berry, and they came here looking for a church where they could worship together. And Susan is a financial analyst at the state of Illinois, and she enjoys traveling. Ben is a financial analyst also at the state of Illinois, and also um, enjoys music, camping, sailing, reading, hiking, and bike riding. I forgot to mention, between them, they have four kids and their very first grandchild on the way. This is Carolyn and Paul Black. They have two adult children and two grandsons. Carolyn is a cosmetology instructor. She enjoys reading arts and crafts and spending time with her family. Paul is a UM pa United Methodist pastor and director of communications ministries at our conference office. He enjoys genealogy, historical research, and outdoor grilling, cooking, and smoking. Devin and Miguel Bohr. They were invited here by members. Devin is a special education teacher in Chatham, and she enjoys photography, crafting, and playing video games. Miguel is a behavior health advocate at Blue Cross Blue Shield. He enjoys graphic design, painting, and also playing video games. Okay. And Tom and Pam Bohr are Miguel's parents. And they, have, they were invited here by friends. Pam is a retired teacher. She enjoys camping and her sewing group. Tom is retired from the Springfield Fire Department and he enjoys camping, fishing, and gardening. <laughs> Y'all can clap for Leon. <laughs> this is Hope and Brett Cherry. They were also invited here by friends. They have two children. We have two and a half year old Leon and eight month old Helene. Hope is an instructor at SIU School of Medicine. She enjoys theater, being outdoors, and serving as board member for nonprofits. Brett is a special, special education teacher for at risk teens. He enjoys sports, fishing, and outdoor grilling and cooking and smoking. Tim Collier is married to Jessica. He works at Aramark. He enjoys music and worship, and you probably have seen him on stage as he's part of our worship team. Will you start heading in front? This is Melinda Craig. She was also invited here by a member. She is retired from IDOT, enjoys cooking, music, and reading. Lynn DeMarco has two adult daughters and three grandsons. She came here when her daughter Jenny got married down in our sanctuary. She is happily retired and she enjoys cooking, sewing, and hanging out with her family, especially her grandsons. Kathy Donovan was invited here by one of her coworkers. She works right now at the real estate group. She has two adult daughters and five grandchildren. She enjoys crafting plants and her new puppy, Molly Rose. <laughs> this is Sandy Eads. Sandy is in private practice in counseling. She has two adult daughters. She enjoys gardening, walking, her work, and spending time with family and friends. This is Brenda Harney. Brenda was a member back in the 80s and 90s, and she decided to return here, and we're so thankful that she decided to. 
She's retired from the SIU School of Medicine. She enjoys reading and the joys of her life, her four grandchildren. <laughs> this is Peggy Kane. Peggy was invited by her aunt, a member here. She is retired and she enjoys listening to music and watching TV. This is Glennie and Lonnie Lean. They visited here a long time, a while ago, not a long time ago, a while ago because we sent them a postcard in the mail and they decided to check us out. Glenna is retired as a manuscript librarian and documentary editor. She enjoys reading, writing, and shopping for books. Lonnie is retired from broadcasting. He enjoys music, singing, digital art, and photography. And you may see him share his musical talents down in our traditional service. This is Cheryl Murphy. Cheryl is a retired nurse. She has one beautiful granddaughter named Brooklyn that she shares uh, as a grandparent with Kathy Kerr on our staff here. She enjoys reading, cooking, golf, and music. This is Stephanie Souder. She was invited here by her family. She is a retired music teacher and she enjoys reading and music. You can also see her in our traditional choir. And last but certainly not least, Jen and Chris Tibbs. Jen has two adult children and she used to attend here in the 2000s. She is an ambulatory analyst at Memorial Health. She enjoys swimming, golf, gardening, flowers, and bird watching. Chris is in the military. The branch is the U.S. Army. He enjoys hunting, fishing, yard work, and also bird watching. So can we show all our new members our support and how excited we are for them? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Wow, what a large group, isn't this great? And also, didn't Sharon do a beautiful job? Wow, that's amazing. Uh, it's been a delight uh, to work with our new members and we still have a few that could not be here this morning but will be joining at a later date. That being said, it's only appropriate that we would have a prayer over our new members at the end of the service, what I would hope would be that each of you would extend the right hand of fellowship to our new members. Invite them to your small group. Uh, get them involved. And many of them already are involved. That's the cool thing about this church. So that being said, let's pray. Heavenly Father, what a blessing it is to be able to have all of these new members who have been through our G6 discipleship process who now are making a good confession of faith before this cloud of witnesses. We ask that you would bless each and every person that is joining each and every family that is represented and thank you for their willingness to serve and utilize their gifts and graces through the ministry of this church. May they feel the affirmation and the support this morning from our congregation. And we know God that you are smiling down upon us as we have received these uh, and introduced these new members today. And we give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. So, we have a lot of things going on today and a lot of good news to share. Now, um, I want to share something that I think should excite us all. So, um, back in around 2007 or 8, uh, the church had a debt of around $12 million. In 2023, September the 10th, 2023, our current indebtedness is $956,892. Let's give God a round of applause.
Friends, we are gonna pay this off by mid-25, if not sooner. And if anyone would like a pen to write that check this morning, <laughs> I had, just so happens I have one. So see me after the service or Bob, okay? We'll be glad to accommodate you. Anyway, we gotta have a little fun with that. We got a lot of great things going on. Uh, beautiful baptism, Justin's teaching a young adult class that we're kicking off this morning. Uh, and so if we have any young adults here that would rather be with Justin than me, go, go for it, man, go for it. You know, let's do it. So uh, we are just excited about uh, opportunities that God is giving us to serve and to give. Um, we are also very mindful of the fact that there was a major earthquake yesterday in North Africa and Morocco. Over 2,000 people were killed. We as United Methodist Church, we respond to natural disasters. We also know of the uh, wildfires in Maui, Lahaina, uh, and then the hurricane in Florida. So there's a lot of things going on, but we want you to know that your church responds when there are these natural disasters. So if you give a special offering this morning, up and above your regular giving, and, and it just so happens I got this offering envelope, uh, or you can give online, designate for uh, natural disaster relief, 100% of what you give goes to the need through United Methodist Committee on Relief. It's called UMCOR. 100% of the dollars goes directly to the need. So. We're just gonna cast that vision this morning, and you might not have been prepared to give to the special offering to that's fine, because obviously it's an ongoing need. So there'll be opportunities through the week and on coming Sundays for you to give as well. So we just want you to be aware of that uh, and uh, that kind of thing as we move into our time of offering. We are so grateful for your generosity and your joyful generosity, which is one of our core values, uh, inspires the giving of the rest of us and it supports the ministries of the new members that we have received, as well as the new young adult class that Justin's doing and all the good things that are happening in the life of the church. Uh, that being said, we invite the ushers to come forward to receive the morning offering as we take a look at what God has going on through this church through the update video. Good morning. I am Eleanor Mack, and I serve as a member of the choir and as a Kid Life volunteer. As we receive this morning's offering, let us be reminded of the ways your gifts are making a difference in our church, our community, and our world. Fall small groups begin this week. Sign up outside the worship spaces today or on our website to celebrate this new season of groups and classes, we will be having a pizza night in the Community Life Center on Wednesday, September 13th from 5.45 to 6.30. Sign up on the connection card or online at springfieldfirst.org. Grief Share is a support group for people who have lost someone significant in their life. Led by a caring team of individuals, this group meets for 11 weeks beginning this Tuesday, September 12th. For more information, contact Trish Quintens or call the church office. Monthly Senior Fellowship resumes Thursday morning, September 14th in rooms five and six from 9.30 to 12.30 with a hot lunch served at 11.45. See our Senior Ministries newsletter for more details. Beer Lahai Roy Women's Ministries is one of the local missions our church supports. Their annual fundraiser, Hike for Babies, will be held at Lincoln Park on October 7th. You may show your support with a donation to sponsor me to represent our church in the hike. There will be a table in the atrium outside the sanctuary on September 24th and October 1st. You can also get your own sponsors and join in the hike. Thank you for your generosity. Does your elementary age student love to sing? Kids choirs are starting back up on September 13th. Kindergarten through third choir and fourth through sixth grade choir both meet in the Kid Life hallway on Wednesdays from 515 to 545. 
Registration forms can be found at the Kid Life Kiosk or from Allison Means. Our Senior Ministries is attending a Cardinals versus Brewers game at Bush Stadium in St. Louis on Thursday, September 21st. We will depart at 10 a.m. for a 12.15 p.m. game. See sign-up sheets outside each worship service area. All of these upcoming opportunities are made possible by your generosity and commitment to giving to Springfield First. You can learn about all these events and more on our website, springfieldfirst.org. If you have any questions, please contact our Director of Connections, Sharon Sweeney. What a great video. Wonder who that person was. <laughs> so it is not lost on me today that not only do I need to pray for uh, the folks in Morocco and then also for those in Hawaii, but also tomorrow is 911. It is not lost on me, and it would be a huge miss if we did not remember uh, that fateful day on 2001, September the 11th. So we need to pray as a part of leading into this message. That takes precedent right now. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we worship in this beautiful facility. Uh, We have a lot of exciting things to celebrate and all of that, and yet we are also painfully aware of those who are suffering throughout our world, whether it be those folks in Morocco, in Northern Africa, and all the many people that have been displaced and the loss of life, Um, and then also the wildfires in um, Hawaii, and the many people that lost everything and many uh, that are not even, uh, have not even been accounted for. And then we also would remember that fateful day on September 11th, 2001, because in our minds, each of us now are going to where we were at that time. And Lord, we know that many, many people uh, that were the perpetrators of this heinous act have been brought to justice. Others will still need to be. We pray also for all the families that uh, grieve throughout the year. Uh, There's not a moment or an hour or day that goes by that they don't grieve for the loss of life. And we grieve uh, as a country. And so we pray and we pray Um, and will continue to remember and never forget. And Lord, as we uh, move into this new sermon series on renewing purpose, Lord, uh, let me get out of the way and may your Holy Spirit take over, speak through me, and uh, may Jesus Christ be glorified. For it's in and through his name that we offer prayer. Amen. So I'm going to begin the message this morning a little differently. I'm going to begin with a couple questions. And the first question that I ask you, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to respond out loud. So the question is this. 
What did you want to be when you grew up? Everybody, what did you want to be? I thought so. I thought so. Follow up, well, some of you, I should phrase this, some of you haven't grown up yet, right? So you, you still are looking ahead. Now, the next question is this, and, and this is only I ask for a show of hands. Are you currently doing now what you wanted to do when you grew up? Show of hands. Hey, yeah, there's a smattering of hands. Yeah, all right. So uh, I wanted to be a professional basketball player. My mom would tell you, and she's here today, she would attest to the fact that I spent countless hours with my younger brother in the driveway of our home in Belvedere subdivision in Brighton, Illinois, shooting basketballs. And, uh, but I quickly knew that I would not be an NBA player. You know why? For two reasons. Number one, I can't jump. And number two, I'm not very fast. So I quickly knew that I needed to kind of refocus, reshift uh, in order to be able to live into my purpose. God had other plans for my life. God has plans for all of our lives. There's a wonderful scripture that I found in Psalm 57 too. You see it on the screen. The psalmist said, I cry out to God most high to God who fulfills his purpose for me. God fulfills our purpose. As we know, we are launching into this new sermon series, perfect time to do it, in the fall of the year when we're back into the swing of things and we are thinking about our own particular purpose. There are two things that I know that are universally true about purpose. Number one, we're all looking for it, and number two, God is the author of it. Number one, we are all looking for it. That's a universal axiom. And number two, God is the author of it. As you know, I am a avid reader. Primary book is the Bible, but I read a lot of books on leadership and other kinds of material. And one book that I found to be very interesting and still making my way through is Richard Simmons the third book on reflections on the existence of God. He says in this book, human beings are driven by a deep sense of meaning and belonging. And he said the early Greek philosophers taught that all human beings are telic creatures. Telic comes from the Greek word telos, which means purpose, purpose. It was Viktor Frankl who wrote a bestseller called Man's Search for Meaning. Who was Viktor Frankl? He was a prominent Jewish psychiatrist and neurologist who lived in Austria. In 1942, he and his wife and parents were arrested and put in a Nazi concentration camp. At the end of the war, three years later, Viktor Frankl survived, but his spouse and his parents did not. Well, following four years of recovery, and reflection, Frankel wrote the book Man's Search for Meaning. He said the difference between those who lived and those who died came down to one thing, meaning, meaning or purpose. He said life is not primarily a quest for pleasure as Freud believed or a quest for power as Alfred Adler taught but a quest for meaning in his or her life. Now, I'm going to take some of you back to Psych 101 in college. So I was a student at Greenville for two years 
before I went to McKendree for two years to finish college. So in college, uh, I, like many of you, maybe some of you took this in high school, but you were exposed to Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Do you remember that? What I learned and remember, and you know, there's certain things we remember in life, where we were at a particular moment, sitting in this auditorium, there were hundreds of students there. It was a class that everyone had to take. And I remember being exposed to Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And what I learned from that is that in order to satisfy one level of those needs, uh, you know, when you satisfy that one level, then you're able to move to the next level. So the first level, as you can see from the bottom, is physiological needs. We all have the need for air, water, food, shelter. When we achieve that, we moved up to safety needs, security, employment, resources. Then we go up the next level to love and belonging, which is friendship, family, and intimacy. Those are important things. Those are needs that the Church of Jesus Christ can address. And then from there, once those needs are met, we move up to the esteem level, which is respect, status, and recognition. And finally, if all those needs are satisfied, then we move up to the top of the pyramid, and that is self-actualization. A desire to be the most that you can be. In other words, a desire for meaning. A desire for purpose in your life that is beyond yourself and your own abilities and whatnot. Well, there's one thing, obviously, that it leaves out. Where does that meaning and purpose come from? In the church of Jesus Christ, we believe that God is the author and the creator of all things, including humankind, and is the one that gives us meaning and purpose for our lives. And friends, it comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. We find this to be true in a passage that you might not necessarily associate with purpose, but I believe it's got purpose all over it. And that is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and I'd like to read this to you. Hear these words. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. But God, who is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you've been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you take, can't take credit for this, it is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. This passage, this biblical text is all about purpose. You see, we can't talk about purpose without first identifying the artist. God is the artist, and God holds in God's hand a divine paintbrush, and before him is a white canvas that represents your life and mine. You are his masterpiece. And God paints with broad brushstrokes across this canvas to create his masterpiece, or as one translation says, to create his workmanship. 
Now, notice in this text that I just read that the author, Paul, does not dwell on our flaws. God does not dwell upon our flaws, our feebles, and our foibles. God does not dwell upon those things. But Paul says that by our sinful nature, we are flawed and subject to God's anger. However, he has raised us up from spiritual death when we receive Christ as our Savior, he has raised us up from spiritual death to be partakers of a new life in Christ through the resurrection of Jesus. That then sets the framework for the canvas in which God is with a uh, divine paintbrush painting across this canvas, and that represents your life and mind. God, through the Holy Spirit, is chipping away at the residual. You know, when I became a new creation in Christ, there still is residual from the old life. Things that I know that are not of God. God continues to chip away at those things to make me what he wants me to be. He's doing the same in your life. Even when you don't always recognize it, God is working bringing you along, bringing you along to represent what he is doing in your life. Why is God creating us as his masterpiece? Well, the answer is clearly found in the text. If we were to just take one verse out of these 10 verses, my friends, it would be this verse. Ephesians 2, verse 10. We are God's masterpiece. Have you thought of yourself in that light? Start thinking of yourself in that light. You are God's masterpiece. He has created you anew in Christ Jesus. You are born again. You are born anew with the divine seed of the life of God within you. That is of God, not of yourself. You see, the text really nails it. You see, here's the thing, and people confuse this. We are not saved by good works. Let me say that again. We are not saved by good works. We are saved for good works. There's a major difference there. Some people are trying to achieve God's favor by believing that they are saved by what they do. No, you're saved by grace through faith. And so now you are living in response to that commitment decision that you have made. You are saved for good works. See, here's the thing. I believe that God's singular purpose for your life and mine is to glorify and serve him. I really believe that. Uh, Yeah, I believe that God called me to be a pastor, but I believe that I could have lived out my purpose if I had done something else. Now, if you had known me a long time ago, you would have said, there is no way I'm going to attend his church. (laughs) There is no way I'm going to attend his church. And my wife's sitting out there, don't say amen. (laughs) You had known me before. I was not a good person. I'm not happy about that, but here's the deal. God can take those experiences that were traumatic and hurtful in my life, he can redeem them and use them for his glory. And he does the same for each of us. If we will just surrender to his purpose in our lives. Some people are thinking, gosh, I need to to have a divine sign, you know, in the sky that's going to tell me what I need to do. No, God is much greater than that. God is more expansive than that. He gives you freedom to make that decision. You know, he does. I was working with local pastors this weekend at the conference office, um, teaching them on preaching, and many of them are second career pastors that were doing something else, and they would tell me that they were called to be a preacher years prior, but they were now just getting around to it. You know, their, their singular purpose is to live for Jesus, but their calling was to serve in whatever way they were serving, and then that was expressed then through the pastorate. You see what I'm saying? 
The path that we choose to follow in our lives is in response to our life purpose, which is found in our relationship with Jesus. So you have as much a calling in your life as I have in mine. It's just that I chose to exercise my calling through being a pastor for now 37 years. But you are, God's calling upon you to live into your life purpose is just as valuable. It's just as valuable. In fact, I would venture to say that you have the opportunity to reach more people for Jesus than I do. Why is that? Because I work with people that are already in the fold. You know, I work with all of you sheep, you know, and that's a good thing, but we want to reach those who aren't convinced yet, who haven't woke up to the reality that God has called them for a reason. Think about our new members today. They are each unique individuals living out their purpose by following Jesus through serving him in the life of our church. Isn't that cool? They are living out that through choosing this particular place to be in service to others. Your sense of purpose is derived from your relationship with Jesus. Your calling and vocation are lived out in response to that relationship. So as Justin and I have been preparing these messages, uh, I had to go back to Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life. You remember when that came out, many of you do, back in the early 2000s. He, he wrote The Purpose Driven Life. He also wrote The Purpose Driven Church. Both are worthy of your consideration to read. So in The Purpose Driven Life, um, fantastic, as I've gone back to kind of begin to look at that again, um, he, in that particular book, has a poem uh, from an individual by the name of Russell Kelfer. And so um, this poem, in my mind, uh, really ties up uh, our message today uh, and, and ends on a good note. So that being said, I am going to ask you right where you are to stand. Uh, stand where you are. I'm not going to ask you to read the poem, but I'm going to read it as you are standing. So let me share this poem with you today. Uh, this is out of Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life, and it's a poem by Russell Kelfer. You are who you are for a reason. You're part of an intricate plan. You're a precious and perfect, unique design called God's special woman or man. You look like you look for a reason. Our God made no mistake. He knit you together within the womb. You're just what he wanted to make. The parents you had were the ones he chose, and no matter how you may feel, they were custom designed with God's plan in mind, and they bear the master's seal. Know that trauma you faced was not easy, and God wept that it hurt you so, but it was allowed to shape your heart so that into his likeness you would grow. You are who you are for a reason. You've been formed by the master's rod. You are who you are, beloved, because there is a God. Amen. 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 Well, amen. We are who we are for a reason, because God created us to be his, in his very image. And if there's anything in this world that's worthy of praise, it's our master, our creator. So this morning, we are going to sing one more song together. One that we've learned recently, but maybe feel a little bit different this morning because we are going to praise the Lord in the valley, on the mountain, no matter what. I'll praise Him.
Uh, thank you, Allison and worship team, for a wonderful uh, job this morning. A uh, couple of things that we want you to keep in mind today. Uh, obviously, the first thing is, um, is that you will extend uh, your hand of greeting to the new members that stood before you earlier in the service. If you see them around, do that. They're going to be busy this morning. They're going to be introduced at the 1030 Contemporary. And then they're actually going to unite with the church and membership down at the 1030 Traditional. So they're going to be busy, but please uh, make it a point to do that. Also, it's very important today that along with picking up your donut out in the hallway, you can have mine, I've refrained, uh, is that you sign up for group life, for small groups that we are kicking off this week. We have many groups that we are offering uh, beginning this week, and we want you to sign up. Uh, This goes right along with what I was talking about in the sermon, you know, on uh, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the importance of belonging and acceptance. Guess what? The church meets that need. So we want to inspire you to be able to take that step and join uh, a new group. We have several new groups. We have some existing groups Uh, which I know that you would be welcome to, uh, and that kind of thing. So take that step of faith, and we want to see you get signed up uh, Wednesday night. We're going to have pizza in this, I think, in this very room at 545 before many of the groups begin. So that's something you'd want to be a part of, okay? Uh, The uh, next thing is this, and that is that uh, I believe it's important um, to offer, and we don't always do this, but I'm going to try to make a conscious effort to do it week in, week out, and that is to uh, offer opportunities after the service for you to pray with someone. Uh, Many times, Justin and I, we are busy, you know, running down the other end for that service or whatever we're doing. Uh, And sometimes we're not available, but we want to make ourselves available. And I have some other people that are making themselves available to pray with you. Uh, You know, when I was talking about receiving Christ as Savior today, maybe you you need to take that step, which would help fulfill that purpose. Or maybe you have a prayer need. Uh, Whatever whatever it is, uh, I have a a few people that will be over in this area to my left that would be willing to pray with you this morning uh, after the service. So we just want you to know that we are here for you is most important thing that we want to say. That being said, I want to offer up this benediction today. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. And all of God's people said, amen. 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 Tired. You sing it, say. Never get tired, never get tired. Come on.
Oh. 